If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to the Social Media Addicts Podcast on the phillytech.org netcast network. Sponsorship provided by AWeber at aweber.com slash phillytech. Get Flywheel, optimized WordPress hosting at getflywheel.com. Wistia.com at wistia.com. And Zoho Mail. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Social Media Addicts Podcast. I'm Seth, that's Jody, and that's Howard. Everyone say hi. Hey, how y'all doing? And welcome (laughs) to another edition. Uh, First off, we want to thank everyone for those who have sponsored the show. Um, Go to patreon.com slash phillytechorg. Give what you can monthly. A dollar is good enough. Whatever you can helps us produce the shows that you like to watch. Also, we want to quickly thank our sponsors, Wistia, A Weber, Flywheel, and Zoho Mail. You heard about them throughout the show as well. So, so Madonna's in the news again, guys. She's releasing a music video only on Snapchat. Go. <laughs> well, it actually, Snapchat, I'm not a big fan of. I've talked about this before. But it does make Snapchat a little bit different. It's now thinking like a media company as opposed to just a communications company. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Is her video going to expire? Otherwise, why do it on Snapchat? Jody, what say you? Um, I don't necessarily understand the purpose of doing it on Snapchat. Um, I've it's had a lot of respect. Shiny. Huh? It's new. It's shiny. Look, I've had a lot of respect for Madonna. Um, she's about the same age as I am, although I think I'm like much better preserved than she is. But yeah, you know, yeah. her her birth year keeps changing every year. Yeah. But that's a whole other story. Mine stays the same. She just keeps getting younger. But um, Madonna does refuses to grow up, and maybe she's trying to appeal to a younger generation. Maybe. I mean, I think it's clever. I think that. The whole ephemeralness of it is kind of neat, but the thing is, is that it's not going to be ephemeral. They're going to the release is the early release of her video, so you get the sneak peek of her video. But it's, she's not really her peak. She's not like having people like dying to see her videos. I mean, she's a Madonna. She's talented, but she's no she's no One Direction. She's no. These is it boxes. supposed to be risque? Is that the idea? Because I understand that I I didn't see the um, um, the awards, but I understand her outfit was very. Um, revealing? Is this supposed to be so much risque? Wait, Madonna would be risque? How is that possible? She's never, she's always like the picture of... (laughs) Sorry. But is that what it's supposed to be? Is that why it's Snapchat? Because, you know, oh my goodness, it's, you know, you'll see something revealed? I mean... Who wants to see that revealed? I don't know. Because if if that's the audience, I don't think they care. No. Unless she's kind of milf-like, I don't know. Who knows? Who is that knows? gross or is that cool? I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's move on. <laughs> so the net neutrality is probably saved, um, but they also, the, FC, the FC, FCC may also get sued by the big telcos and cable companies. What say you guys? Howard? <laughs> Howard? Well, net neutrality. You always have See, something to say. Come on. Um, yeah, net neutrality I have a, a, a ton to say on. And it's very interesting. The big thing to remember is Tom Wheeler is in the like Hall of Fame for the the organizations that are supporting of the cable companies and lobbyists and things like that. And that's his roots. So when you look at the things that are coming out, this is really good. And I'm kind of looking at it going, everything here is really, really good, except there's one thing in there, and I forget what the exact language is, but it's basically saying we're not going to, yes, we might call the cable companies common carriers, but unlike what they did with the telephone companies, they are not giving up the last mile. And this is a really important point. That last mile, that's the part that allows 
other people to go in on the existing cable infrastructure. So mm -hmm. if the idea is let's give more competition, that didn't happen. Um, more competition would say let's open up the lines for more people. What did happen are things like municipal internet. Well, that's really great because municipal awesome. internet, internet says, hey, we can get through all the permits. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't say to another company, let's say, for example, um, Sprint said, you know what, Verizon's got Fios, a, uh, Comcast has its cable uh, lines. We're going to decide that we're going to put in, in competing lines. They have to dig their own infrastructure. Yeah. And they can't dig their own infrastructure to a central point and then hook up the last mile to your house. So that means instead of just having a Comcast box in your front yard and a Verizon box in your front yard, you're going to have a Sprint box in your front yard that they're waiting to hook up. So that's a lot of flags when it's time to do things like pour a, pour a driveway. A lot of flags. That is a lot of flags. And um, Jody, before I go on? Before well, I have my yeah, seven, personally, I think, I think it's a lot of lip service and gobbledygook. Um, I don't feel that um, it's necessarily truly net neut neutral. Because neutral would mean that there is no um, leaning one way or the other. Um, True. So I don't think that this is the, the end of the, the debate. I don't think this is the end of um, the concern about net neutrality. And I don't think it is necessarily going to ensure anything. As long as the private interest is going... Agree with that, Jody. What's I that? I don't agree with that. I feel like this is a step in the right direction. I feel like this is something that needs to happen. And eventually it might lead to more... Uh, more net neutrality I mean, and eventually lead to the glass mile being opened. But here's another thing that people forget forget and that they don't really bring up is that Tom Wheeler, back with when AOL, there's AOL and there's Tom Wheeler's company before he was a lobbyist and all that. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> he had a competing um, competing service with AOL. AOL went over the over the telephone lines. I mean, they, they could just dial up on a modem. He went over to the cable lines, and because he went over to the cable lines, he didn't have as much freedom, and his company went under. So he does have a vested interest in seeing this go through, because he has an axe to burn with the cable company way, 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 way back. So maybe that's another reason why maybe he's saying, like, after he sees all these comments coming in, and people saying, don't let the cable companies have a fast lane, don't let the cable companies have their way, and then he says, well, that gives me an excuse to say it's not just me with a bone, an axe to grind. Here's people wanting, they want net neutrality. I can stand up to my bosses, my, you know, pseudo bosses and say, look, we're going to put these net neutrality, you know, rules in place, you know, and make you guys common carriers. I think it's a step in the right direction. Whether or not it's enough in the right direction, I'm not sure. I don't, think, thing... I don't, I don't think it's lip service. I think there's well... pieces of it that are lip service, though. There's, there's one big thing that I think is a huge win, and to me the huge win is they allowed network administrators reasonable bandwidth shaping. Now, that's a fancy way of saying, hey, look, video content that's streaming, we're going to give it some prioritization over email, because email, if it's you know, half a second late, is no big deal, but video, if it's half a second late, it doesn't work. But what it also says is, if you have a video delivery service like Netflix, and you have another video de delivery service like StreamPix, you can't say, because we've made a deal with StreamPix, we're going to slow down Netflix. So what that actually does from a practical standpoint is Comcast, which has been, um, whether they admit to it or not, we see lots of tests, when Comcast slows down or basically makes it so Netflix has to pay extra money to get good traffic, when Comcast has to pay uh, or gets paid by Netflix to have good traffic, now we have a problem that says, well, StreamPix goes through unencumbered because it's Comcast's Netflix competitor. So that part of net neutrality, that's where the big win is, which is, hey, your cable lines are cable lines. They are not prioritized based on the fact that you own a competing service to someplace else. Mm -hmm. and so, what do you think this will do to something like the Weather Channel where they've been kind of like shut out? Um, it, do you mean shut out in terms of uh, web content? Well, yes, but also like broadcast content. Do you think it has well, any impact at all? I think what happens is you're going to eventually see the cable networks um, not so much being forced to unbundle, but 
channels are going to say things like, look, we can go straight to the consumer. We don't have to be part of a cable package or a Verizon yeah, yeah. package. So, for example, you might take a, a channel like I mean, HBO is already doing it, but you might take a channel like the Discovery Channel or a channel like Comedy Central or ESPN who says, look, we c will make money by selling our content directly to the consumers because now, as a consumer, I could say, look, I want one type of thing for ESPN and for Comedy Central, you know what, I just want The Daily Show and Colbert Report. Um, oh, no. Wait, that's later. Um, <laughs> not, no more Colbert Report, but the idea is... Um, I want to make sure that as a consumer I can buy what I want. The interesting thing is there's so like when I think of all the cable channels, there are way more channels that I don't watch than I do. Right. And the cable companies for years have been saying we don't want a la carte. And what this does is it says to the channels, look, if you have a big enough audience to go a la carte, go for it because you can. Absolutely. And I think that another big win is the fact that they are open to this and you can't ban you can't have uh, I mean, if you call something unlimited on, on, what's it called, on, on so mobile... Lean, in, lean into your microphone more because it's hard sorry. to hear. In mobile, in there now, in the, you, can't, you can't ban with shape on mobile either, either now. You can't no, you can ban with shape mobile. on mobile, definitely. Mobile has ban no, with shape. No, actually, no, he's, he, he's contradicting that. He's saying that he's... That, that he's mobile proposing. Is, he's proposing. It's not what it's he's... Not it's not a proposal. It still needs to go to the, the other... The right. Other, Commissioners, and then the Senate can overrule it, and you know, but most of the Senate won't overrule it. I mean, the Congress won't overrule it, but you know, ultimately, it has, still has to be. This is all a proposal, so it's still not a done deal yet. So, well, all I know is I'm really annoyed with AT and T because they told me I had unlimited data as long as and it's it, under three gigs. <laughs> yeah, how, yeah, and if you go over that, it's going to slow you down. Oh, they throttle it big time. That's just wrong. Well, it's one it's part that I'm excited about is the new definition of broadband, which is 25 megabits down and I think uh, six and up six is up. the official new definition of broadband. So I get to get on the phone with Comcast and say, hey, my Comcast business class service, which is 16 down and three up, which is what they sell as a broadband package, they're going to have to bump the speed up unless they don't want to call it broadband anymore. Well, they'll come up with another name like Superband. Oh, yeah. I actually think they avoid the broadband term. Um, but uh, I, I think that will be interesting to see if they do come up with a speed bump to match that because that was sort of the, well, they're kind of doing it as low as they possibly can it with a business class service. Absolutely. Well, let's thank our sponsors. I want our sponsors today. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of their online video. We use them here. We love them. And they really help us produce great video. Um, they help us put it out on the web in custom branding. And so check them out at wistia.com and tell them, tell them we sent you. All right, so Seth guys, what's that? Tell them Seth sent you. Tell them Seth sent you. <laughs> um, so you, so you know, everyone, everyone knows that Google is notorious for not having any customer service. Well, now Google Hangouts... Now Google is using their own Hangouts for Google Play devices, Nexus devices, and Chromebooks. So, what do you guys what do you guys think of that? I mean, they're actually going to support their Nexus devices via the, their Hangouts. Well, anything is an upgrade from a Perl script. So, um, I always, or not Perl script, a Python, Python script. Python. Excuse me. Python. Yeah, but right. uh, anything is an upgrade from that. I've always sort of joked about Google customer service that. Um, you just had to find the right help doc because that's what they were going to do. Um, I actually had issues um, with different clients and different things like that. And what would happen? I would send an email to their customer support. I would go through the process, and I would get email back usually three to four days later that had a link to a file that said, this is what you need. And I would do that, and I was like, and I would reply, no, I already found that. That's why I'm calling you. Like, um, the Python script help is terrible. So I hope that this... Uh, Hangouts version of their customer support extends past their Nexus devices and into AdWords products and into all the other things that they do. I, so. um, well, they I would love it if there was something you could pay for for webmasters. Well, they did have AdWords support. I have called. I have called Google on their ad with AdWords, and because you pay the money, that's a, that's a bread and butter. They do have good support for that. Actually. But did you do it? Did you do it as a Hangout? No, I didn't do it as a hangout. I did it well, see, I think that's the difference, though. I think that's what they're suggesting in the article is that they're utilizing the hangout technology. 
Yeah, I think that's definitely neat that they're actually using their own technology. I mean, they might as well. If they spent so much time and money on it, they might as well use it. I think it's a fantastic technology. I think it's underutilized by business. I think it's a great way to introduce it um, and incredibly helpful. I guess the only thing that I'm kind of wondering is that whole concept of, remember when they introduced help outs and it, everybody was clamoring because they wanted to get in on it and I don't hear a thing about it anymore except for like one or two people who are very like old school as in yesterday but um, you know when you say old school I'm not talking years, I'm talking like six months, right? So, yeah. Yeah, right? Old school in the old form. Yeah. yeah, but you remember like when they introduced the help outs and you could pay and you get a private tutor for whatever and you had to put a proposal together and you may or may not get certified or, or you know, you may or may not get... Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Whatever happened, do you hear anything about them anymore? No, people still, people still use it. I, I, I know there's quite a few people that still use it, but it's not as, it's not being touted as the great thing that it once was. I mean, people aren't really for talking week. about it. <laughs> it once was for a week. It was once a great thing for like about a day, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So anyhow, um, let's move on to how many, you know, so everyone remembers Edward Snowden, and everyone remembers, you know, he really, you know, shook up the internet with his revelations that the NSA is spying on everybody. What a surprise. Um, but these revelations have really changed how journalists do their job on the internet. They're a lot more cautious and whatnot. And we have a great story in the rundown about about this. And what do you guys think about you know how journalists have done their news? Do you think that Snowden's revelations have really really changed how people do how the news is reported? I mean, have you seen that in the news coverage? Crickets, crickets, crickets. I well, I think it's the new age of journalism. Um, journalism, not it wasn't about just going from print to online, but really starting to say, look, we have a 24-7 news cycle, and we have to report stories. Stories go out on the net and get edited over time. So you will see something posted yeah. today, and then there will be an update to that story three days later, because they know, here is the page online that everyone's going to. So if this is starting to impact their methodology, that's only natural. And, you know, it, trying to make sure that things are secured properly, that data is being protected, that sources are being checked, that they're not being, uh, basically, they're not being pwned, they're not, so, something isn't happening uh, to just try to get clickbait. Because um, we've seen things where, you know, stories come out there and lots of people don't check it and then they get tweeted out or published out and then it's like, oh, this was a hoax or this wasn't real or, you know, haha, funny joke, but, you know, it's really easy to run with a story in a 24-7 news cycle, so... Uh, Learning. I think that um, Eric Snowden is just one aspect of, and I agree with pretty much what Howard said, of how the media is changing. But you think about it, um, our information is now bubbling up from a million channels. All social media is now contributing to um, breaking news and, and videos about things that are happening. The airplane that crashed and you could see somebody had a dash cam. These kinds of images, you know, were were not available in the past. And I think, absolutely, it's not just Eric Snowden, but it has to do with Edward. The, Edward. Well, it doesn't have to do. It, it has to do with more than Edward. What did I say? You said Eric. Eric Edward. No, I thought I said Edward. But um. I said Eric. <laughs> Eric Edward. Whatever. I mean, so you know, to to some extent. I think that his story was important, but you think about what's going on in media today. If you think about the way we utilize broadcast versus social, right? Social is just raw. It's everybody contributing. It's information coming from the masses. And we used to think of the broadcast media as being vetted and um, as sharing information that had been checked out. Well, as we found out this week, when you have newscasters that are misremembering facts um, and and posting or, you know saying things that are are out and out um, let's say not necessarily accurate that makes you question well why do we even need broadcast media maybe we should just look at this unvetted stuff and try to figure it out so yeah. and I know that well, kind of leads us into one of the other stories well, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow on to that before we jump to the sponsor, and that is I think what's happening is you're starting to see great news organizations learn how to curate, 
as opposed to saying this is my story it's they're learning how to say things like this is this story over here and here's what we've learned so if that conversation can continue and we get more oh, for lack of a better term um, the, the story itself grows over time and it's okay to say okay here's the beginning but there is a middle and an end to that story and even after the end there's a postscript to that story and different news organizations are going to be good at curation at different points in the process and I think that's something where you know that's the social the, the I don't want to say democratization but the social element of it is we are those curators just as well you know it's one thing to say oh well I have a webcam so I saw something and I can post it I might be the creator of the original story and then there are other creators along the line and curators to really make sure that they pull in different things so we'll see how that plays out it's neat but to be but they should have been curating all along Howard I don't think that's that's new no, I think that's no, something this is different Jerry it is different like Billy Penn is a new news organization in Philadelphia they, they have their own stories, but they also, a lot of it is saying, hey, look, the Philadelphia, Philly.com had this story. Here's what we think up here. Here's a little, our take on it. And here's, the, here's their story down below. So, I mean, it, it, yeah, they, they're all curated. That's called that. editorial, and that's been around forever, Seth. No, but it's not editorial. It's, it's their reporting on, on top of the other reporting. It's, that's it's right. editorial. On top well, of if you think about it, think about the traditional newswire. If you think about a Reuters service, um, these news wires were the places where your local news, your major newspapers, they pulled their stories off of that in addition to their local reporting where the news wires didn't catch up. Well, the number of actual news wires is in the millions as opposed to like five. So if you were in the bit if you were in 1980 and you had business stories, you were pulling it off of Bloomberg and Reuters. You really didn't have that many other news information channels. Where now you have them everywhere everything from you know someone with a cell phone in a meeting room to another person who posts a press release on their own website without actually giving a press release they just put yeah, it on their it, website it's like that yeah because the so, thing is, when you think about it, it it is like there's multiple wires out there more than there were net were back then i mean i remember when i worked with a student, uh, journalists we had the ap wire and so we would say we we read our take on it and we'd say we'd supplement our con our commentary or our story with ap content so, and then at the bottom we would say this so and so from the AP contributed to this article, and right. that's a lot of what Billy Penn does, and I think the, the Philadelphia Voice does that a lot too. The New Philly Voice, it's less original content, it's more curated content. But you know, anyhow, before we go into our next story, let's quickly thank Flywheel. Flywheel is a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies. Flywheel makes it simple to build, launch, and maintain client sites with an easy-to-use dashboard built from the ground up for, moder for the modern web designer. With nightly backups, blazing, lo blazing fast load times, and WordPress-specific security, it's an awesome place to build and develop your and launch your WordPress website. So check them out at getflywheel.com. Anyhow, so we were alluded to this before, but Brian Williams is in trouble. You think? You know, just <laughs> what was your first kind of, clue there? Yeah, he kind of missed for remembered... A key fact, the fact, the key fact that he wasn't in the plane that got shot down over it was it Afghanistan or Iraq. Do you think he, he elaborated a little bit? He elaborated it, and it kind of came out that he, he was embellished for the news. Like a little was, bit like, embellished. A little bit embellished. A lot of embellished. This, this is sad because this is the guy who took over Tom Brokaw, one of the great journalists, of, of, you know. And well, you know, I always had the highest regard for Brian Williams until this. I always thought Brian Williams was, you know, an upstanding journalist. This kind of like really. I I think the problem with Brian Williams can be summed up in a really simple term. He was one of the few news anchors who was also really a celebrity. He went on the talk show circuit. He goes on frequently. He's a personality. So he is a personality that is. It's a great personality, and if you think about personalities on talk shows, they tell great stories. Do we go and fact check it? No, because they're normally not a news anchor. And so I don't agree with what he did, but I can see how Brian Williams, the journalist or the reporter, can have a discordance with Brian Williams, the celebrity. No. And I think that's, that's what we're seeing. There. That's just absolutely wrong. I'm sorry. You know what? I don't care if you're a celebrity. I don't care if you're a newscaster. You have a responsibility to... to tell the truth, okay? It, you don't get a pass because you're a celebrity that you didn't have a pass because you're a newscaster. You're one and the same person. I don't, I don't buy it. And I also don't buy Nancy Snyderman. 
Dr. Nancy is the um, yeah, that's, that's just bullshit. medical that's expert. Just bullshit. What's bullshit? It was bullshit how she, what, what you're about to say, that she snuck out with the Ebola. She didn't sneak out. She was supposed to be on quarantine. One of the people on her film crew wound up with Ebola. She was supposed to be on quarantine. And she broke the quarantine to go to the supermarket. I'm sorry. Not only are you on television telling everybody how critical this is, you are you're very public. People had signs on their lawn saying, you know, look out for this, this woman if you see her, recall the police, right? So she came on um, when she came back after the quarantine and she apologized. That's okay. Not it's well, my take on it is she broke the public trust. Brian Williams broke the public trust. I don't think, personally, I think that's done. They're done, period. Mm -hmm. Next. There are enough nice looking people. But there's enough nice looking people who can deliver the news that we don't need to have people that we don't trust. And I think it has to do with marketing and the credibility of the channel. And Amen. just just so you know, I'm not forgiving him at all. I'm saying I can see where that road of, hey, I'm a celebrity, I need to be an awesome celebrity, would give him the reason psychologically to say, I need to have better stories than I had. I need to be more of a hero than just it's some guy reading the news. Yeah, I, don't I don't think it's I don't think it's right, and I think uh, he I did not do journalism. Well. He did fantasy, and he yeah, did fantasy in a journalism seat. You just don't do that, you know. Regardless of whether you're Madonna or you're Katy Perry or you're, you know, anybody, Brian Williams, you don't do yeah, that. It's different, Jody. It's to be comparing a journalist who supposedly held the higher higher standards of, you know, of, especially of fact checking and telling the facts correctly. Madonna, and Katy Perry, they can talk out of their backside all they want, and if their credibility goes is shot because of that, okay. But it's definitely It should be held to a higher standard when you're yeah. a journalist. Yeah, I agree with that. And you're, the, and you're not just a journalist. You're not just Nancy Slanderman, who's a medical reporter, who's you know just another reporter who has a little bit of celebrity. Brian Williams is a good-looking guy. He's on all the show's circuits. He's got personality. He's like Tom Brokaw, who's like a Walter Cronkite kind of guy with a great voice. Not but, anymore. But Tom Brokaw, you would never have seen him do that. Well, and I think that's Seth's point. Seth's point is this. If we think about Walter Cronkite, Tom Brokaw, and who's next, Peter we Chattanoke. have a particular image in mind. Whether it, whatever, Whoever the person is, that person has a credibility that we as a um, sort of news-eating public look to to say this person's going to tell us the facts. That's what we're looking for in an anchor. And I don't think Brian, Willi Brian Williams has proved that he is not in that legacy. But he wanted to be a celebrity. But, but isn't it shame, Howard, that, that now this, his legacy has gone from following in those footsteps and being so incredibly iconic to mm -hmm. leaving a legacy of shame? Exactly. It, it's a bad thing. Right. Well, he, fortunately, he didn't sit in the seat too long because what we're going to remember, it, it would be one thing if he was our... Footsteps. If he was our, our anchor, the same way Walter Cronkite was, let's say after 30 years of Walter Cronkite, we learned that he was making up half the stories. Well, that's 30 years of horrible. He wasn't. We know that. With Brian Williams, this is the new gig for him. This is you know relatively new. We, we've seen that path. And what we're going to learn is someone else needs to step up to that plate because it wasn't Brian Williams. Who do you think it will be? you think Lester Holt? Don't know. Because the problem is we won't know for 20, woman. 30 years. It could be a woman. No, I know. I'm saying Lester Holt does the weekend edition. I mean, I think Katie Couric. I, I, I think Katie's awesome. I like Katie. But I, mean, I don't Katie's think awesome. I think she's well, got high but Regardless of who it is, we won't know until they've done it for 20, 30 years and left a legacy that we can trust. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 think, I think we'll know sooner than that. Yeah, but I think Tom Brokaw, like, he was there when the Berlin Wall fell. He's been there since, you know, he was in Vietnam reporting the news. I mean, I mean, Brian Williams had a big shoes to fill, but I think he tried too hard, and he embellished. And he got too big for his bridges. Anyhow, let's move on to Twitter. It's now for something completely different. <laughs> yeah. Twitter. The U.S. government shares some of the info that the NSA requested from Twitter. Oh, sorry. And some of it's redacted. <laughs> it's a little bit redacted, but Twitter is sharing what the U.S. government 
and then as they asked from them. But, you know, unfortunately, it's majorly redacted. But what do you expect? You're getting something, but literally this is something, 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 period. Like, it, I mean, it's interesting to see that the government's trying to be a little bit more transparent, but not much. What do you guys think? I think it's very redacted. <laughs> I don't know how you can make Hyder like just looking at it. I don't think you can uh, determine what they're asking because there's just too much redaction. Yeah, there's a point when it's like, why even release it? It's kind of like it's because it's kind of funny. It is kind of funny. On that well, note, and, oh, you, Howard, do you have something to say about this? Yeah, the uh, those the FISA court requests are very interesting because you've got all these tech companies who want to release the data but they are not allowed. It's sort of like, mm -hmm. we're going to ask you for this data and you can't tell anyone that we've asked. And what you can disclose is you've gotten a certain number or a certain range and things like that. Range, and it's, it's the range. It's like you've gotten between you know, 0 and 250. And like you have these weird ranges that you can release. Um, and the tech companies all want to say everything. They want to be completely open. And the government is giving them just a little bit of rope. Not enough to really be effective. Um, what's interesting is some of the tech companies that are putting out these pages that basically say, we haven't received any requests yet. And the, the idea is you know that they get a request when they have to take that page down. So they don't disclose that they've been requested anything yet, and they can't disclose the number in aggregate, but as soon as they get a request, you have this page on the site that vanishes, and it's sort of like, oh, that's our canary in the coal mine. That's the page that when it dies, you know they've gotten FISA requests. So it's, it's, it's interesting to see this, and Twitter's been very vocal about um, trying to disclose exact information, so the more that they can. Well, well, yes and no. Google's been, yeah. they fought for it, but they didn't fight particularly hard. Twitter been, has been a much more uh, a fighter in this uh, government information. Oh, and we have something about Canary a little bit later about ghosts and Canaries, so we'll allude to that. Before we get to that, we want to thank A. Weber. A. Weber is local to the Philadelphia region. They've been in business for 16 plus years. A. Weber helps entrepreneurs, agencies, and small businesses connect with their customers through email marketing. Um, we have a special deal for everybody. If you go over to aweber.com slash Philly Tech, you can get your first month for just $1. So check them out, A. Weber. We love them over here. So I'm even wearing my Weber shirt today. So well, I got this today at a job fair. So woo, you know, so yeah, you know, free shirt. I love my A Weber shirts. So check them out today. Aweber.com slash Philly Tech. Now on to something completely different. To quote Monty Python, um, John Stewart will be leaving the Daily Show this year. No. No. This just broke this afternoon that he is. Uh, going to be leaving the show later this year. He hasn't said when. I know, it's very, very tragic. Um, I think about it this way. He's been doing this show for a very long time. He's helped yeah. launch other shows. He's helped launch other comedians. Um, I'm really hoping that what it, whatever is next for him is part of getting more great comedians uh, there. And maybe he's got something up his sleeve. Maybe he's making a run for the presidency. I oh, awesome. doubt that, but... Whatever. Awesome. Um, I'm going to miss him. I watch The Daily Show on a regular basis, and I already missed The Colbert Report, so giving me taking two of my favorite shows off the air within the same year is very painful. Very painful. Charity, what say you? you? Do you watch... Um, do you watch Sometimes um, the time I do. I'm not... I'm, yeah, not every night, but um, I think he'll be missed. He's, he's funny. He's irreverent. Um, it was a good show. There you go. Well put. Um, so... Do we have a question of the week? No, we don't. I don't know where that came from. All right. Let's thank our last sponsor of the day, <laughs> Zoho Mail. They are a professional email for your business. So check them out at zoho.com slash mail. Nice and short. Let's go to our picks of the week. I have a funny one this week. It's called Fwext. F-W-E-X-T. The fact that they actually tweeted me and they wanted me to take a look at it, a video. It's a vi video of, it's, you can you can set up three different um, predefined text messages. I'm on my way home, help, whatever. And, and you do it, and you can send them with a flick of the wrist. So you can say, this is help, 
this is I'm on my way home, and this is like whatever. Like this is um, this is another saying. So it's a neat little technology that they're using to do accelerometers and text messages. So. Well, I agree that that's very, very cool, but I'm going to make no comment on the hand gestures. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. I just made a comment on it. <laughs> no one saw because everyone was looking at you, so you're just laughing. And I'm being completely innocent, but people will think about it. So, Jerry, what, you, what say you about that? I, I can barely hear you, Seth, so I have no idea what the hell you're talking about, but I did see your hands move. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> Howard, can you tell us about Instructables? I will tell you about Instructables. Um, I like to make stuff, so I'm going to talk to you about my pick this week, which is Instructables. And what is Instructables? Instructables is a great little website where you can basically you post the projects that you make, and you can find other things to make and customize. So, for example, I'm making LED lights, and I saw this great little project to make a little portable LED light table. And I looked at this project, and I went, oh, my God, considering the LED stuff that I'm already doing. This thing is so easy, but I never thought of it, and it's using a picture frame. This is a great network, Instructables. It has all kinds of stuff for the community, everything from food to tech to around the house to crafts. To It's just got some great, great stuff, lots of great ideas. Um, I'm a big fan. I love the Instructables, and I think everyone should go check it out and find something cool, and there will be stuff there to have to play with. So awesome. that is my pick. So Jody, you have an update about your pick from last week and also the fact that you have ghosts. Yeah, well, so here's here's what I talked about last week for those people who are just turning in this week and might have missed last week. Um, it's a device called Canary, and um, Canary is, I guess I would call it a home security device. It has a camera that's built in. Um, it connects through your Wi-Fi, and um, it is motion-activated. And what's kind of cool is, like, I'll be sitting at work, and I'll get an alert, and it says, um, Canary has detected motion. And you can go in, you can see live video of what's going on, and then you can make a determination if you want to call the police. Um, it also can learn. You can explain to um, Canary, oh, that's just the dog moving. And, and ostensibly, it does learn um, what's going on. You can sound an alarm they as well. Learn that, wait, they'll, wait, hold on. They'll learn that that's Ruger? And yes. say, oh, that's Ruger or Jewel, and then it's yes. not a big deal? Correct. That's cool. Now, it also takes um, a, an error reading of the temperature, and it creates a graph so you can see what the temperature is over time. It's kind of neat because you can kind of see when the, the heat turned on and then went off. You know, like, you know it's a little, little grid. Um, it also takes a sample of the air to tell you what the air quality is, um, and it also um, tells you what the humidity is. So, I mean, that being said... Yeah, you do with that what you will, you know what I mean? It doesn't bother me one way or the other. But, okay, what's kind of cool about the, the video is that during the day, obviously, you've got a lot of ambient sunlight and, and light coming in. So the room is, is portrayed in full color. However, at night, it goes to an infrared mode. So really it, cool. it picks up stuff in the room. Um, and like I said, it only will start to record if something is moving. So, but my strange phenomena um, that, that's been going on, and I, I can try to share it with you. Um, one of the things that happened, I, I noticed a couple nights ago, around 1.30, 1.20 in the morning, 1.30 in the morning, I'm in bed, and apparently Canary picked up some kind of activity, and um, I thought, well, maybe one of the dogs went downstairs, but no, the dogs were upstairs with me. So, um, I don't know if you can see, but Here's um, a video at 1.30 in the morning. I, mean, I think I'm, I didn't put it up fast enough. Let's start it again. And what you can see is some kind of like a weird, did you see it? Yes. Like a weird really kind of weird. dancing thing that looks kind of like um, like a bird or a feather or something. There Water is, goes. I have no bird in my house. There are no feathers. I checked the whole area to see if something had landed. Um, for those of you who have been watching the show, you may remember um, not that long ago my sister passed away. And I do have a lot of her effects around um, that room. And gadgets, too. Crystal. What's that? And her gadgets, too. Well, gadgets, yeah. but um, 
so so what's strange you just saw the one but there's more than one video of these what would I call it lights orbs orbs um, and there's one that I'm sitting in the room I'm talking to a friend and obviously we did not notice anything in real time and yet when I watched the playback because it picked up on movement these lights are above our heads and they're like it's not like a car light like you would think you know car car lights would, would traverse across the wall these things are like dancing and doing unusual trajectories so yeah I don't know what they are um, I will see if I can get in touch with Canary support but um, Suffice it to say, it's weirding me out. <laughs> but, but I'm glad that, that I have the device because it, it's cool to look at work and see what the dogs are doing. <laughs> see, see if they're eating your, eating your, your furniture or anything like that. Destroying my clothing, yeah. <laughs> well, on that note, hopefully it's Casper the Friendly Ghost or Karen, Karen the Friendly Ghost. You know, may she rest in peace. You know, hopefully it's a friendly you know apparition of some sort. You know, comes coming to play or be around you and protect you or something like that. So keep it positive mm -hmm. here. And it's not, <laughs> nothing, nothing nefarious. Because <laughs> I don't think I don't think even the dogs can you know, protect you from... We've had enough nefarious in our life. We need no more nefarious. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's our show for this week. A little, a little, off, a little bit off the, off the cuff. But, you know, yeah, I think it's a good show. Um, <laughs> once again, I'm Seth. You can find me at Seth Goldstein on Twitter. Jody, where can they find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter as Sunswept and pretty much everywhere else as Jody Rains or uh, my website, which is webmarcom.net. And Howard. And I am Howard Yermish, and you can just find me at howardyermish.com, um, and that's probably the best place, or look me up on Twitter at hyermish. And if you go to howardyermish.com, you'll see a picture of him going, mm -hmm. Exactly. Wrong, wrong, wrong spot, wrong spot. If, oh, that on Twitter, yes. If you go to the Howard Yermish account on Twitter, it'll say, you are at the wrong account. Go to the H. Yermish account. <laughs> it's shorter. So. All right, guys. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs>